Hi, my name is Martin Perhiniak. Welcome back to the Digital Arts series here on PSD Touch Plus. This is the second episode where I'm going to talk about brushes and using a graphic tablet. First of all, we need to understand what's the difference between using a mouse and a graphic tablet to, together with Photoshop. Here on the left you can see a comparison between the mouse and the tablet, but I would like to also show you if I go to the brushes panel and I turn off the shape dynamics, this is most of the time what you can achieve with a mouse. Because the mouse doesn't have pressure sensitivity, that's why you will probably end up with a brush something like this. So whenever you draw, it will be the same size. And obviously with a mouse, it's quite difficult to draw precise uh, lines and curves. But if I have a tablet, I can use the pen pressure to control the size or any of the properties of the, of the brush. In this case, I use shade dynamics and controlling the size with the pen pressure. And you can immediately see here on the preview that now, thanks to the pen pressure, I can draw a line and controlling the size with my pen's pressure. So the more I press it down on the tablet, the harder or larger the size of the brush will get. And at the same time, I have much more control over the drawing as well. If I go back a couple of steps, I can show you with the tablet, I have really good control over my lines. So I can draw very precisely and it's also very dynamic. I already showed you the brushes panel, but before we get to those options, it's good to know about the options here on the top, on the control panel. The reason why I start with the brush options, because we are going to use most of the time the brush tool to paint and to create artwork in Photoshop. So that's why it's really important to understand these options here on the top. First of all, we have this option here on the left, where we can save and create and then select presets. So whatever you set up for a brush, you can store it as a preset. And this is really useful and I will come back to this later once we set up something. The next option here is to set up the size and the hardness and to choose a brush tip shape. Now you can create brush tip shapes and that's again something that I'm going to talk about in more details in the next episode. So that's how to create custom brushes. But first of all, we are going to use the ones, the default ones in Photoshop in this lesson. So the size and hardness is quite simple to understand. Increasing and decreasing the size will change the size of your brush and the hardness will make it soft or hard on the edges. Now these two options can be easily changed with keyboard shortcuts and this specific keyboard shortcut works the best in CS5. It also works in CS4 but there it's a bit more complicated so I'm going to concentrate on CS5 at the moment. If you hold down Control and Alt on the keyboard while you have your brush, uh, to tell the truth it works with all the drawing tools in Photoshop. So if you hold down Control and Alt together and then you click with your brush you won't draw, but you will see a preview of your brush size and hardness. And then if you click and drag to the right, you increase the size. If you drag to the left, you decrease the size. And if you drag down, you make it hard edge brush. If you drag up, you make it soft edge brush. So that's up and down and right and left movement on my uh, tablet. If you are a Mac user, it's Control and Alt. Be careful, it's not Command. It's Control, Alt and click and then drag right, left, up and down. If you are a PC user, it's also Control and Alt, but then you need to use right click. Okay. If you have a tablet on the pen, you can set up uh, the right click for your uh, for the buttons on your pen. I found this the most useful way to change these two basic attributes of the brush, so the hardness and the size. You can always right click and change the size and hardness here if you need a specific percentage for the hardness or the size. But what you can also do is to use another keyboard shortcut, the bracket keys. The bracket keys on your keyboard 
can be also used so the square bracket keys will also increase and decrease the size of the brush and if you add shift you can change the hardness of the brush so, so shift and the bracket keys together the next very important thing with the brush is the opacity and you can also change this by adding a value here or instead of clicking on that little arrow you can click on the opacity option and drag it left and right but you can also change the opacity with an easier keyboard shortcut using the number keys like pressing 5 will change the opacity to 50 percent you should know that these keyboard shortcuts would change the opacity of the layer if you have another tool selected so if you don't have a drawing tool which has an opacity attribute then the keyboard shortcut will change the opacity of the layer so for example now if I select the move tool which doesn't have an opacity then if I press 5 you will see we change the opacity of the selected layer if I press 0 that will set it back to 100 percent and if I select the brush which is also can be selected from the toolbar or you can also press B as brush on the keyboard so now I'm back to my brush tool and if I press 0 that will set it back to 100 percent if I want to have a specific opacity like 25 percent I press 2 and 5 after uh, one another so 2 and 5 and now it's set to 25 percent and you can see the change on the opacity of the brush let me just set this back to 100% and I'm going to show you what's flow. If I set flow to 10%, for example, you can also do that here on the top or using shift plus a keyboard, I mean shift plus a, a number on your keyboard. I press shift 1 and that set the flow to 10%. It's similar to op opacity, but the difference with this is if I start drawing and I continue drawing, then with one brush stroke I can build up a 100% opacity if I continue drawing that brush stroke while if I have the opacity on 10% and flow on 100% let me do that so I just set the opposite so opacity 10% flow 100% I start drawing and no matter how long I draw over a part it will always stay 10% opaque and only when I let go my pen or my mouse and then I click again and draw over then I can add more opacity and if I continue doing this I can build up a more dense uh, and solid value or volume here with my brush so that's the difference between the opacity and the flow they both control the opacity or the transparency of the brush but in a different way. Let me just set back the opacity also to 100% now and I just delete these elements from my layer. I use usually if I want to delete everything from a layer I press command A or control A on PC which is select all and then press backspace and then I use command or control D to deselect it. Now I already talked about opacity and flow but I didn't mention the airbrush mode this is the option here if I enable the airbrush mode that is also a bit similar to the flow option so let me just first show you without this if I click now and hold down my pen this is what happens but if I have the airbrush mode on I can use my pen pressure to control the flow of the ink so if I click and I hold down and I add more pressure I can increase the size of the brush so let me show it again without it I click and that's it even if I change the pressure it won't change uh, that brush but with the airbrush option on I can always add and change the size of the brush or uh, the density of the ink by holding down and changing the pen pressure so that's also a useful option I usually don't work with this one but sometimes it's, if I need it it's easy to turn it on here on the top on the control bar the other interesting options in CS5 that we have these little icons here on the top next to opacity if you turn this on that will enable 
the pen pressure to control the opacity. So now if I start drawing, you can see that if I add more pressure on the tablet, with one brush stroke,